wasn't any um, hesitation at all after I had spent a year living in, in, in the poorest neighborhood in Chicago to go to the treasurer's office at the school where I taught and ask them to lower my salary, lower my, my, my payment as a teacher beneath what was called the taxable income. I think it was $3,000 at the time. Right. And, and they were kind of curious, but agreed to do that. And I, I guess that was in 1980. And since that time, I haven't paid any taxes to the United States federal government. I, I can't. I can't pay for war, uh, for the prison industry, for the terrible ways in which immigrants are treated, for the police brutalities. So I very quietly um, turned toward the soldier that was screaming orders. And I asked him, could you help me understand why you're screaming at me? And he just screamed louder, very angry. Don't say anything. Keep your eyes glued on the soldier in front of you. Raise your arms higher. Spread your legs further. And uh, my arms were stretched out. And at that point, I said, I'm sorry. I can't cooperate with this any longer. And I started to move my arms down to my side. Well, within a second, I was down on the floor. Uh, a soldier was kneeling on me. I was quickly um, hogtied. They, they bound my wrists and my ankles, and then my wrists and ankles were tied together. And uh, the soldier who was kneeling on me referred to me as uh, this expletive. And I quickly realized that I might lose consciousness because, uh, you know, he was very heavy and he was knee kneeling on me. And so I, I said, you know, I'm sorry, but um, you're really hurting me. And I, 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 I'm having, I can't breathe. And I think the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King recognized the international impoverishment of the world. And when he thought of poor people's campaign, he was thinking about poor people all over the world and about the obscenity of resources being poured into ways to destroy people and destroy the environment. So we have in the United States today, Reverend William Barber with the Poor People's Campaign. And it I'm is a yeah, growing and very exciting movement. And he, he insists that we must uh, connect the dots, if you will. And, and, and that's inclusive of looking at the militarism as well as the uh, mass incarceration, the cruelty toward uh, people who are new immigrants or the uh, suspicion and um, derision of people that causes us to build all of these walls in the first place. Got uh, a word from a group of youngsters. On, they were in a pup tent, a small tent on a mountainside in the province of Bamiyan. And we were doing a fast to protest Guantanamo. And we were in Washington, D.C. with a group called Witness Against Torture. And they, they finally got the word to us that they were fasting with us, that it was a cold January in the Bamiyan province of Afghanistan. And here were these teenagers who understood what was happening in Guantanamo, and they wanted to join our fast. And then I think that, uh, you know, life offers us some gifts, and, and it's a tremendous privilege, I realize. But... But if you can have the gift of being able to align your life with your deepest values, this is a, um, a, a wonderful part of living. And I, I realize not everybody can do that. But, but if it is possible, then um, find kindred spirits and, and enjoy that gift in life. Um, uh, th there are so many brilliant and uh, interesting people in our world today um, trying hard to create a movement to build a better world, to make a world wherein it's easier to be good. And, and so I think uh, finding, finding those uh, people and, and, and being linked, we should look for actions that are commensurate with the crimes being committed and, uh, you know, we, we are living in, in, in very, very demanding times because the climate catastrophe and the nuclear weapons won't go away 
just, you know, the, the nuclear weapons won't go away by themselves and the climate catastrophe won't be redressed without us looking for very dramatic and strong activism. Thank you.